Okay, so today we're going to make a terra aqua. It's kind of like a little mini ecosystem. We're gonna grow some seeds. Now, when it comes to seeds, uh, if you decide to make your own, you can do anything you want. You can use grass seed that you'd put on your lawn. You can use a seed like this. I'm gonna use watermelon because I'm gonna plant these in my garden afterwards and grow some watermelon. But you can use a seed like this, or you can use a seed like you would a bean seed, but they can't be cooked. So they can't come out of a can. They can't be out of a soup or something, but they can be dried like this, right? That haven't been used yet. I would recommend no matter what you use to put it in some water for a little while. So I have my seeds sitting here and they've just been sitting in here for a couple hours. You can leave them longer, especially these dried bean seeds. They probably could, you know, use a few hours in the water. It just gives them a bit more of an advantage when it comes to them growing, gets them started. So you only need stuff from your house, but if you don't have any of these things, you don't have any seeds, um, you don't have any soil, you live in an apartment, this is really hard for you to do, that's okay. You can always just watch this video and use mine as your example. So you have two things you can do. You can either make one, and if you make your own, please send me a picture of it when you're done making it today so I know you made your own. I'll give you a few bonus marks for that. Or you will not lose any marks. You can instead just monitor mine and I'll post a video every week on the day we do observations. You'll look at the one I'm making today and you will observe it and record your observations. So what do you need? You don't need anything fancy. First, you need an empty bottle and it doesn't have to be Gatorade. It can be whatever you have. Whatever kind of empty bottle you have sitting around your house, it needs to be plastic because we're gonna cut it. And you'll notice what I did is I took my bottle and I measured from the curved part. I measured down a couple centimeters, then I made a mark and I cut it. So I have two parts. So this is gonna contain the water and this is gonna contain the soil. The other thing I've already done is I've drilled a hole in my cap, a nice big hole. Now, if you don't have a drill, that's fine. You can put a nail through it and then pull the nail out or you can try to push scissors through, but whatever you do, do it carefully. Do not harm yourself. Do not harm your table. Be kind, right? Uh, again, if you can't do this stuff, then monitor mine, right? So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to first start by creating a system to get water from our reservoir up into our soil. And to do that, we need a piece of cloth. And this is just an old rag. I washed it, so there's no chemicals in it. It's nice and clean. And it needs to be a bit longer than your actual uh, water reservoir. I probably made mine a little long, but that's okay. Too long is better than too short. And I'm going to put it in through the top. So you'll notice not the inside part, the outside part. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to shove it through using a pen just to get it through the hole. That didn't work very well. It was working. Uh, so I'm going to shove it through the hole so it comes out the other side and I'm going to pull it through so that I have a nice big chunk out the other side. And this is gonna act like a wick. It's gonna pull water from our reservoir up into our soil. So I'm gonna so put this onto this, nice and tight. So now it's hanging down like this with a chunk on the inside. Now I need to fill my water reservoir. So we're gonna put water in at 50 milliliters a time and then we're gonna mark it with a pen, a piece of tape, anything you have that you can make a mark that won't be erased, right? So don't use something that's erasable. This is a permanent marker, so it should be fine. So I'm gonna take 50 mils, which is about a quarter of a cup, easiest way to measure it at home. So I got 50 mils or a quarter cup, and I'm gonna put it in, and then I'm gonna draw a line where that water is. So there we go. That was a very thick line. I know, well, that's okay. And then I'm going to add another quarter cup, another 50 mils. So now I'm at 100 mils. I'm going to mark that on my thing. And then I'm going to add another 50 mils. So I'm at 150. This might be all yours can handle. It depends on how big your container is. I'm going to put one more and make it to 200. And the reason we want to mark these is we want to monitor how much water did we start with and then how much water is the plant using through the process. So you'll notice I now have four lines, one for each 50 mils. So 50, 100, 150, 200 mils of water sitting there ready to go. 
Now I need my soil part. So in this, I'm going to put this in and you'll notice now it's going to sit in the water, right? And it's going to pull water up from the bottom into my soil. So I'm going to just take potting soil. So this I got in a bag. The reason I got it is because it has some nice white things. These help retain water, helps a lot with the growing. But if you don't have potting soil, just get some out of the garden. Perfectly fine. Just don't dig up your neighbor's garden or harm anything, right? Ask permission. Take a bit of soil. And we're just going to put that soil into this inverted top. So I end up with a little planting area. So I'm going to fill it so it's almost full. And then I'm going to add my seeds that have been soaking. So I have four, see, one, two, three, four watermelon seeds. So I'm going to add my four watermelon seeds. I'm going to kind of spread them out. I don't want them side by side. It doesn't help if they stick to your finger. So I'm going to spread them out. And we're going to watch to see how these grow. So I'm going to kind of spread them out around the outside. Whoop, that one's stuck to my finger. Get in. And then I'm going to put one in the middle, if it will let me. There we go. There's three. The fourth one does not want to go. There we go, four. So I've spread them out, and then I'm going to add a bit more soil on top. There we go. And then I'm going to add some water at the end, because I want these nice and wet to start with, because seeds need a lot of water to decide to begin. And the trick to this is now that I've planted it, and we're ready to go, I shouldn't have to water it. I'm just gonna put this somewhere nice and sunny so it gets some nice sunshine and I'll let it do its thing. So it should be its own ecosystem. I shouldn't have to do anything. What do you need to do today though? You do need to fill in your initial observations. So you need to look at the water and you need to look at how much water and you need to look at the soil and you need to remember what kind of seeds you used and how many I put in. I put in four. You, If you're doing grass, I would add a whole bunch, right? Count it out. You maybe add 20 seeds, 30 seeds, something like that. If you're, because they're just tiny. If you're doing something like beans, again, you know, beans, four or five, perfectly fine, right? My watermelon, I put four in there. You want to just give them a chance to grow, whatever you have. You can even try the seeds from an apple that you ate, right? Pull them out of the core. Try planting them. See if they grow. They should, technically. They should grow. So if you make your own, make it. Take a picture of this. Send it to me so I know that you did it. If you're going to use mine, you might want to rewatch this video after you open the initial, uh, initial uh, observation sheet and fill that in. Happy growing.